Now this is a car that started the luxury hatchback segment. It was the first mover, but it's gone very quickly from being the first to the oldest. Well, it's about time it got a boost and Mercedes have done just that. Meet the facelifted B-Class. But before we get down to how it looks different, it's important to know that the changes are just not cosmetic. It's had a heart transplant too. If you check the badge on the tailgate, you will see the numbers 200 where 180 used to be. Well, the old 2.1-litre 107bhp version has been replaced by the 134bhp version that we see in the CLA and the GLA. And it does make a difference. This car just feels much quicker off the line. It feels more energetic and it just is much better to drive overall. Which means the in-gear responses have gotten better too. The same 7G DCT gearbox is carried forward and it feels smooth and quick when you're cruising. But push to the limits and the gearbox tends to get a little lazy at times. But the heart transplant is only for the diesel version because the petrol still gets the older 121 bhp 1.6 litre engine. However, what does change for both the cars are the wheels. Mercedes have decided not to offer the 17-inch wheels but a tamer and more ride-conducive 16-inch version. Now, there had been tweaks to the A and B-class suspension for better ride last year, but I suspect there have been additional adjustments too, based on feedback. Now, the ride does feel better whether you're at low speeds or at cruising. It's only when you crash through a bump, a larger one at higher speeds like that, that you're reminded of the stiffer setup. However, there's an added pliancy now that just seems to take the edge off all the bumps and potholes. It also feels better composed at high speeds and corners without a fuss. I haven't really pushed it very hard today, but this is not meant to rally up a hillside in anyway. Well, those are the changes from behind the wheel, but let's take a look at the other cosmetic changes inside and outside. Between the dials is a new colour screen for the trip computer. Speaking of screens, the tiny old command screen has been replaced with a nice new high-res 7-inch one that looks much more upmarket. What's more, like the CLA, it gets the latest version of Merck's operating system and also satellite navigation. Scrutinise the cabin a bit more and you'll find a few higher quality bits like the row of metal buttons and the rich new brushed metallic trim on the dash. It's still generously equipped with the likes of Bluetooth, cruise control, two USB ports, an electric driver's seat, panoramic sunroof, parking sensors, a rear view camera, seven airbags and the usual alphabet soup of electronic safety aids as standard on this trim. Still as expected, the radar and stereo camera based active safety tech could not make it to the Indian car. Now it's not only nips, tucks and a heart transplant, Mercedes tell us that they've actually stretched the B-Class as well, so now it's 34 millimeters longer. It's not instantly noticeable on the inside because the B-Class always had more than adequate room for four and it still does. However, what you do get is quite a large 488 litre boot but you do have to share that with a spare tyre. Other than that the headlights are now full LED units and there's a heavily sculpted new front bumper with a new grill too. The tail lamps too have been redesigned on the inside particularly. And like the C-Class, there is a chrome insert in the lower bumper that gives the impression of twin exhausts. So does the B-Class become more desirable after the facelift? Well, it is more modern, it's more luxurious, it's better equipped and of course the diesel engine feels more powerful and better to drive. So the B has a lot going for it. 
but it's got a lot of competition, not only from the outside but within its own stable too. People love the styling of the A-Class and the CLA, which is much better than the B-Class and of course the GLA, they love for the fact that it is better over the Indian terrain. So where does the B-Class really fit in? Well, it's more spacious and has a bigger boot than the CLA and the A-Class, so it makes it more practical. And of course, even after this facelift and upgrades, it is always going to be cheaper than the GLA. So it does carve out quite a niche for itself and practical thinking buyers will find this interesting.